friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a cataract with genular tear from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock there is history of trauma in this case I have planned the main incision at 2 o'clock to avoid the area of genular dehiscence because if I make the main incision over that area the irrigation pressure will cause vitreous hydration and the vitreous will tend to prolapse into the anterior chamber. So with this thought in mind I made the main incision at 2 o'clock. And now a side port was made on the right side in that area and now tripan blue dye is being applied over the anterior capsule underneath air bubbles then the dye is washed out and then the anterior chamber is filled off with visco in this case it is 2 percent hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose the air bubble may cause some problems so I inject visco again and remove this air bubble. The patient is a lady of 46 years several years back she sustained blunt trauma in this eye and now capsulorexis I have used a cystitome to raise this capsular tag and now I use uterita forceps to do the rexis from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Then I use the needle to complete the rexis. In this area there is no genular tear and the needle can be used. Now hydrodissection was done nicely. The nucleus is tapped. Hydrodissection is done at another place. The nucleus is tapped again. And now I don't try to rotate the nucleus single handedly. After injecting some visco, the nucleus is rotated bi manually. Whenever there is genular tear, remember to dial, remember to rotate the nucleus bi manually. It causes much less genular stress. And now the now the time has come for implantation of the capsular tension ring. At this time I thought a side port is needed on the left side so I made a small side port at 4 o'clock. Now the CTR goes into the anterior chamber the leading end is guided under the anterior capsular rim and then it is gently pushed so that it goes along the equator of the capsular bag and supports the capsular bag nicely. And now I use a sense key hook in my left hand and with the Mac versions I hold the trailing end and the trailing end is placed in the bag. 
but it went suddenly. So, let us see this in slow motion, whether it went into the capsula bag or somewhere else. This is one third of the normal speed. The Sinsky hook releases and the CTR goes into the capsular bag. And now I used a pre chopper to divide the nucleus into two heminuclei in this case, because in cases with genular tear, it is always better to use as much less irrigation pressure as possible. So, I did this I could divide the nucleus into two heminuclei and I have partially divided I have made a crack on on heminucleus. Now, I inject visco and then introduce the phaco handpiece. I am a right handed person, but I have some practice to do surgery with my left hand. I trained my left hand for some time and that is why I could do this case with my left hand. It is not that this is the first time I am trying to do this. In routine cases, I have practiced fecal emulsification with my non-dominant hand. So, I could divide the nucleus into several pieces. In this case, let us discuss the settings. From the beginning, I am using low vacuum, low flow rate in this case and bottle height has been reduced. Bottle height is usually in my surgeries 101 centimeter. In this case, it has been reduced to 76 centimeter and flow rate is 30 and vacuum is 300 millimeter of mercury. So, with low vacuum, low flow rate, I am managing this nucleus. No hurry, this surgery has been done slowly because in complicated cases, we have a mind, we should have a mindset to give more careful time to the patient. You cannot hurry up in such cases. Some portion of the nucleus, the posterior plate is sitting on the posterior capsule. So, I came out, I want to inject some visco behind this, push the posterior capsule towards the vitreous cavity and then go again to emulsify this portion of the lens, cataractus lens. And here I go again and emulsify this portion of the lens. This is the trickiest part. In genular dehiscence, the posterior capsule tends to come forward. So, we have to use visco to push it behind and then remove the nuclear mass very carefully and very slowly. Yes, 
the nucleus has been managed nicely and surprisingly in this case there is no cortex all the cortex has come out probably because of nice bimanual rotation and a good hydrodissection now filling up the anti chamber and the capsular bag with visco I am implanting this IOL in the capsular bag. This is a single piece monofocal hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens. My plan is to place one haptic from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock so that the capsular bag gets extra support by the haptic of the intraocular lens. The bag is already supported by the capsular tension ring, but this will give some extra support to the capsular bag in the weak area. And now the viscoelastic substance that has been used to place the lens in the capsular bag is thoroughly removed. I used not only this Simco cannula, I used bimanual irrigation aspiration also after this for removal of the visco. However, I am not going to show that portion of the video because the video is already getting quite long. So after cleaning the visco nicely, the side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma on either side of these stab incisions. Both these stab incisions are closed and now to check if there is any vitreous strand prolapsing in the antechamber from anywhere, I injected a bit of trimsnolon acetate and as I wash out the trimsnolon acetate, I find that there is no vitreous strands in the anterior chamber. The capsular bag is very nicely supported, the lens is nicely placed. The optic is in the center of the eye and the patient is expected to get good vision, retina is normal. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect empathy and great surgical competence.